Hello, in this video I'm going to give an introduction to the fundamentals of relational databases. In a relational database you can store all kinds of data. Here you see some temperatures, some rainfall, some names and some other measured uh, values. And all this data can be stored into a database. To communicate with a database we use a database management system. The database management system will communicate with a database through a language called SQL or Structured Query Language. SQL consists of a set of commands used to store data, retrieve data and do other things with data. So we need a database management system and there are lots of systems to choose amongst. In this course we will use uh, SQL Server, also often called SQL Server from uh, Microsoft. The theoretical foundation of the relational model was developed by Ted Codd in 1970. He was an IBM researcher. In this model, a table is considered as a mathematical relation. If a database follows all the rules of the mathematical relational theory, it is said to be a relational database. Down here we see an example of a relation. And the relation will have a name, and it will have attributes like a color and car make that we see here. And it will also have tuples, which are practically the same as uh, rows. And data will be stored uh, inside the relation as values, like we see here. To take a more uh, practical approach, uh, we call it a table instead of a relation. And say that the table has a name, like car here. And instead of tuples, we say that it has a set of rows. And instead of attributes, we say that it has a set of uh, columns and um, that each column has a column name. And uh, in the table cells or fields, data are stored as uh, values like we see here. For instance, uh, Mercedes and uh, Blue and 2007 are all values. The order of the rows and columns are of no importance. The way the columns are separated from each other is by giving them unique uh, column names like we see down here. And the way to separate the rows from each other is to introduce a unique identifier that is able to uniquely identify each and every row in the table. And here is the naming convention we will use for databases in this course. Avoid abbreviations unless it's obvious what it means. For naming database, use the Pascal case notation, like we see here. For naming the tables, use only capitalized letters and uh, use singular form, uh, for instance car, not cars. And uh, for the column names, use uh, Pascal case notation, the same as for um, database names. And for parameters, we use the camel case notation, which is the same as uh, Pascal case, only with a um, lowercase as the first uh, letter. A null value is not a real value, but an indicator that tells us that it is not registered any value in a specific field. Normally one tries to avoid null values when possible, but it's not always possible. Here we see some uh, data about a car. The car is not sold yet, so uh, we don't have any value to register in the reg data field yet. And since we don't have any owner to register yet uh, either, we also have a null value in the owner ID field. So sometimes we need to have null values instead of real values. Each table in a relational database must have exactly one primary key. The primary key must be able to uniquely identify each row in the table. And the primary key may consist of several fields, but it uh, will still be considered as only one primary key. We see one uh, example down here, where we have two columns that in uh, combination constitutes one primary key. So this is not two primary keys, but one combined primary key consisting of two fields. And uh, up here we have another table with one column as the primary key. For the primary key, the database management system will enforce something called entity integrity. And this consists of two rules. The first rule is that repetitive values are not allowed for primary key fields. If you see over here, we have a combined primary key consisting of actor ID and movie ID in combination. And here I have uh, registered one and one in the first row. And in the second, second row, I um, register exactly the same data. And this will result in an error from the database management system because the criteria demanding only unique values in primary key fields is violated. 
The other rule is that the null values are not allowed in any primary key fields. If I take a look uh, down here, we have the same combined key. And uh, we can see that uh, row 2 has a null value in one of the primary key fields, which implies a violation of the rule forbidding null values in primary key fields. This violation of the entity integrity rule will also result in an error. We will study a couple of examples. If we take a look at the table down here, named car, we know that all cars have a unique registration number. That means that the registration number can be used as a primary key. Because this number will be able to uniquely identify each and every row or car in the table. So I can use this column as a primary key. If I take a look at the other table, I will see that this is a table for registering some data about the tournament. And for each tournament, we will register several players. That means that uh, this tournament column will not be able to function as a primary key itself, because it will include repetitive values, like we see here. But the combination of tournament and player uh, will always be a unique combination, and therefore it can be used as a combined primary key. We will have a look at another term called candidate key. Sometimes the table can have several primary key candidates. We can say that uh, it has uh, several candidates to be its primary key. If you, for instance, have a table where we store some data about students, we can register a unique student number for each student. But the students will uh, also have a unique government assigned number, since uh, this is something that all persons in the country have. Both these numbers will be able to uniquely identify each row of data about the student. So we can see here we have uh, one column with the student IDs and another column with the student's social security number, both consisting of only unique numbers. Then we have identified the candidate keys. After that, we have to select one of them as a primary key. And very often a table will only have uh, one candidate key and then this will of course have to be, the selected, uh, be selected as the primary key. But other times a table can have two, three or more candidate keys. And then one have to do a qualified selection based on other criteria. In uh, our example, the use of um, a social security number will, due to privacy rules, in many ways be restricted. Which is also the reason why a student number is created in the first place. Therefore, the student number will most probably be the natural primary key selection in this case. A foreign key is a reference or a link from one table to another table. When we have lots of data, we normally don't want to store all the data in one table. So we split the structure into several tables. But then it is very important that we preserve the original connections between the data, which is done by introducing a foreign key. And we will look at some examples. Here we see a table with information about some persons. And over here we have another table with information about some cars. We know that each car is owned by one person. And because we have the relevant data separated into two tables, we define owner ID as a foreign key in the car table. And let this be a reference to the primary key, also named owner ID, in the person table. That means that when we register, for instance, owner ID 1 in this row, in the car table, it will be possible through the foreign key to find out more about the person who owns these cars, since the foreign key can be used as a lookup field to find the corresponding data in the person table. In this case, we can see that uh, the owner with owner ID 1 also owns another car that references the same person in the person table. In this case, one car is always owned by one person, but one person can own many cars. And this is called a one-to-many relationship, which is important to know when we later in this course are going to model databases with a database modeling application. For primary keys, we have the entity integrity rules. And for foreign keys, we have something called reference integrity rules. As for the entity integrity rules, the database will also force the reference integrity rules to be followed, unless we specifically instruct it not to. An error will occur if the rules are violated. I will shortly explain the reference integrity rules. The values in the foreign key and the, in the primary key it references have to be of the same data type. Null values are allowed in the foreign key a null value will only mean that the field containing this value is not referencing anything at the moment, which are okay. 
but uh, if it is a combined foreign key then either all or none of the fields have to be null. And if a row has a value registered in its foreign key, like here, then a corresponding value has to exist in the primary key. Like we see here, we register one and we have one in this um, uh, primary key field in the other table. You can say that the foreign key field is not obliged to reference anything, but if it references something, then this value it references uh, has to exist. So if you relate it to uh, our example, we can say that we can register a car without registering uh, an owner. The car uh, may, for instance, uh, not be sold yet. But when you are going to register an owner by putting a number here in the owner ID field, in the foreign key field, then this owner already has to be registered in the primary key field of the owner table else the database management system will send an error saying that the rules of reference integrity are violated. Here we can see that all the owner IDs in this uh, foreign key uh, field uh, in the car table have a corresponding uh, value in the other table. We could have left uh, one or more of this, uh, these fields uh, empty with uh, null markers. Uh, if, for instance, uh, this Mercedes uh, was not sold, we could have uh, had a null uh, value here instead of this uh, number 6. But we couldn't have uh, registered an uh, owner with owner ID 7. If it didn't uh, exist an owner with owner ID 7 in this um, primary key field in the, in the table person. Such an attempt would have been a violation to the reference integrity rule, resulting in an error from the database management system. This was some of the basic rules of relational databases and we will uh, delve deeper into this in the coming lessons.